Well, I wasn't expecting this. That didn't take long. The no. phone rang. It was Volvo of High Wycombe. It was some not very good news. In fact, it's, it's very, very bad news. I recommend you that it's uh, not really driven on the road. I think the car is beyond economic port there. Yeah. Start. Yes. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome aboard the Lunar Express. And I call it that because I don't think I've really pointed out that 307,000 miles is almost 60,000 miles in surplus to take you to the moon. This car has done the equivalent of a trip to the moon and starting the journey back. Also, it's the equivalent to about 12 circumnavigations of the equator if you were to drive right around the widest part of our earth is pretty mental but obviously with that sort of mileage and the age of this car it's almost 20 years old now there's a few things wrong with it so i still haven't decided whether to get rid of this car quickly or not the mot is actually next week and i think that will probably decide what happens to it but in the meantime what i wanted to do is bring it to a garage to have it looked at to just give me a good idea of really what we're dealing with here and no better place to go than Volvo themselves and that's exactly where I'm headed this morning to Volvo of High Wycombe and if you watch my first video with this car you're paying close attention you might remember that High Wycombe is where this car has had the majority of its services throughout its life or throughout its recorded history at least that I have so actually the 45 minutes or 25 miles or so to High Wycombe now will probably be the longest journey I've done in this car. So it'll be interesting to see, firstly, if we, we make it there, but then also what they have to say. Just a quick update, in the meantime, between videos, I've actually had pretty much all of the systems on the fiber optic line out. I've been doing lots of fiddling with, with tools, which has been quite fun, actually, but I've had the subwoofer out at the back, I had to remove so much trim to get to that, the radio receiver in the headlining, I've had this whole central module out, the amplifier under this seat, which I just realised I haven't bolted back in actually. Should be okay, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, and, and various other components that are all on this fibre optic line. The reason being, because I've plugged in a fibre optic loop to see if I could sort of bypass and, and identify which was causing the issue, but didn't really get anywhere with that. The only thing I managed to do is get the screen to come up with Dolby Pro Logic for a few seconds and, and that was it. So at least I know that I do have the Dolby Pro Logic system, which is the best sound system available at the time from, from Volvo. And actually, there was an interesting comment on, on my first video of this car from Sam's Motor and Machine. He's another YouTube channel. He does a lot of stuff with his L322 Range Rover. You should check him out. But he said, I think that he used to, to work at Volvo and they used to have a special disc of sounds like fighter planes and all sorts of stuff that they'd plug in and share with customers who you know might be buying a, a car with this sound system uh, just to show off how amazing it was so that's a, a cool little fun fact an easter egg that i didn't know there seems to be a few there's, there's a few weird noises actually there's a very loud don't know if you'll be able to pick it up but sort of a revolving squeak it sounds a little bit like a brake disc that's on the metal and it's just stuck to the pad a little bit but i don't think it is that it could actually be the belt and that would make sense because it's very much due one <laughs> Okay, we're a mile away and I haven't been left on the side of the road or swallowed by my own headliner. Not quite anyway. Got a couple of warning lights on, we've got ABS and a red exclamation mark and I'm also in the wrong lane. If I open a window, you might be able to hear that squeaking if you listen carefully now. Listen. expected we're literally on a residential street and it looks like some back-end garage it's a bit weird not yeah not what I was expecting unless I've come to the wrong place let me go and find out okay I think uh, I think this is the right 
right place, so let's go. Oh. What I mean, we're sort of just on a residential street. The bin men's just been down here. Volvo Cars High Wickham. Uh, did I go into the wrong? I did. I did, classically. Classic little parking. I'm such a moron. Well, I wasn't expecting this. Car dropped off. Really, really lovely, lovely people there. We had a nice natter about the good old fiber optic system in those era of my XC90. So he seemed to know about the woes I've been having with that. And yeah, they, they understand what the deal is with that car. They said they're gonna check it out for free and obviously you're not doing anything. But I'm in a brand new XC, I don't know what we are in. Actually, I haven't looked. I think it's an XC40 maybe. So I wasn't expecting to get such a nice car. I mean, a day's rent on this is probably more expensive than to, to buy my XC90. So uh, what a treat. And I've got this, I think, I mean, I presume, unless they call me back right away saying, this is a lost cause. I've got this until tomorrow. So uh, I'll drive home in this now, see what this is like, and I'll update you when I hear back from Volvo of High Wycombe about the good old XC90. So let me say a huge thank you to Carly for sponsoring today's video. And this next to me is not another one of my Copart purchases. It is in fact my friend Charlie's car. And he's asked me to code a few things with my Carly on his car today. So to use Carly is extremely simple. You just take your OBD reader, plug it into your car's OBD port. And then what you need to do is go onto the Carly app and connect to your vehicle. So in this case, we are in Charlie's BMW 1 Series. It's a 2012 and it's an F20. This is a gasoline car. And now if we just switch the ignition on, we should be able to connect. So before we actually do the coding on Charlie's car, let's run a quick diagnostics check, which obviously you can do at any time from anywhere, just to see the health of your car. So in Charlie's case, it's actually come back saying that there are 26 issues and the health status is very bad. But if we actually look at it, it seems to just be mainly sensors and stuff to do with the daytime running light. But what we can do in the case of this, where it says lamp mapping implausible, is going to Carly's smart mechanic, which will give us more information about the issue itself and potential ways of addressing it and maybe even fixing it. But obviously being able to do this at any time from anywhere is extremely useful and actually is cost saving because if every time you had something come up on your dash and you had to take it to a garage, it would end up costing you so, so much money in pesky garage diagnostic fees. Now we can move on to the coding, which is what Charlie's asked me to do. There's a few things that he says annoys me about this car. Number one being when he puts it into reverse, so should we just try this? It makes that BMW gong at him over and over again, which he says really annoys him. So let's go into the coding functions on Carly and remove that. The combi one is the one we're going to go into here. And I believe we're gonna see the option to get rid of that reverse sound. Reverse gear gong, there you go, it's currently set to on. We're gonna click off, press code now, and in just a few seconds, our reverse gear gong should be gone, keeping Charlie happy. Right, so let's see if that has done it. I'm gonna put it back in reverse. No gong, just that one audible note to say that we're in reverse, but it's not gonging over and over again. I understand why you wanted to get rid of that because that would annoy me too. So looking at the coding menu, there are a number of things we could do with this car. We can change the instrument cluster, the light stuff on the iDrive system, and so much more. But we would quite literally be here all day, and I'm not joking, if we wanted to do that. So instead, I encourage you to go and check out Carly for yourself. Have a look what they can do for your car. If you look at the screen now and in the description, you can get yourself a nice discount on your OBD reader. Thanks so much to Carly for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. Back home for now, then next to the Audi TT. I thought I'd just quickly show you this car. I have to say, I really enjoyed driving this back. It was it's um, flawless at the moment. See, so this sort of, I guess they're a Greta fabric, let's say. It's a, a happy environment fabric. But they are they are very comfortable. The heat heated steering wheel. Oh my goodness, I've never experienced it like it. I think you'd get the same sort of feeling if you went to the top of Vesuvius when it erupted and stuck your hands over the top. <laughs> Scorching, but amazing. I mean, that's that's what you want. I suppose it would work if you had thick gloves on as well. You'd still feel the heat through your gloves. Heated seats as well. I haven't looked at the back yet. I don't know what that's got in the way of anything, but it's such a minimalistic and, and lovely design. The only thing that I've immediately picked up on that I really dislike is this... Uh, 
finisher. It looks like that cheap Christmas wrapping paper you get from, I don't know, Tesco's. It's really kind of, yeah, it just, it looks very cheap. I wouldn't say it's nasty, but it's, it's not very nice to look at. Um, and yeah, this screen in the middle is really good as well. I connected my phone, had some music on. That was amazing. Sounds really good. And even just quickly going into the settings and noticing things like this, where you can change the steering feel firmness. Now, that's something that that new Range Rover could have done with, because uh, but this you can adjust and that makes a difference. Got a wireless phone charging pad there, as well as USB-C connectivity. Well, I sound like Matt Watson from Carwell. And uh, the brake pedal feel was the only other thing I picked up on. Very firm. Like, you really, like, if I put my foot down that much, that would be emergency stop. Haven't worked out if I like it or not, but it's certainly a nicer feeling than the spongier sensation of, say, my XC90, where you push it and nothing really happens until your foot's at the floor. No, it's not that bad. That would definitely be a problem if that was the case. And 40.1 miles per gallon over the 17.1 miles. To confirm, it is indeed an XC40. The B3, I don't know what that means. I know it's a petrol. And yeah, 40 miles per gallon, it didn't feel slow either. Not a bad looking car. And I like that it's not one of those weird SUVs that isn't actually four wheel drive, because this one still is. And it's not also that low to the ground. It's still quite high up. And look at that, it has heated seats in the back as well. Gosh, I really like Volvo. I feel like they're not stingy and they know what drivers actually want and they give it to you. I mean, I have no idea if this is options, etc. but what a cool little thing. I'm, I'm very, very happy that they gave me this as a courtesy car. It's very, uh, very, very exciting. Oh, sir, my name's Nigel. Just done a health check on it. We've got a full report on the car. Um, unfortunately, I think the car is beyond economical repair. Um, recommended that it's uh, not really driven on the road. Thank you very much. Ah, well, that didn't take long. Not only, I want to say, 10 minutes I'd been home and the phone rang and it was Volvo of High Wycombe. Uh, with some not very good news, as to be expected. In fact, it's it's very, very bad news. I'll explain more when we get there. But yeah, back in this XC40, which was a bit of a pointless courtesy car, I suppose. I've literally just driven it back from the dealer. Now I'm going straight back in it. And we'll go and uh, find out a little bit more about what's happened. But I've had a full health report from Volvo, as I did with the Audi when I took it there, which is extremely useful. But the news is extremely, extremely bad. guys appreciate it cheers okay so here we have a full xc90 vehicle health report let's go through it at home shall we well here we are then we made it home it's a few days later i've changed my t-shirt put on a top that sports the name of a brand which is renowned for world-class reliability, cheap running costs and repairs, which is what we're going to need because in my hand here is the lovely booklet that Volvo supplied to me with the health check. And yes, they did say that this car, they believe, is no longer economical to repair. And actually, truth be told, the number that they quoted me to undertake the work that's listed in this document well, it begins with a five, and there's not two digits after that five. It's more than that. I'll let you guess the sort of number we're talking about. But needless to say, that would be very much uneconomical. But I'm never going to say never with this car, or, or, or not just yet anyway. Let's go through the list nonetheless. So they have noted down all the things that we're sort of pretty aware of. That being things like the tyres. It says it needs three tyres, ideally four. So we'd just get the lot done. The cosmetic bits, the wing mirrors, the headlights, they suggest that they're replaced. The driver's door handle, the switch gear, some of it in here, the uh, driver's side window switch, the cup holder lid, and the broken trim over there on the passenger side for the window switches. They've also noted about the headlining, be pretty hard to miss. The dim uh, not working, they've suggested a replacement for that. 
the dim being the central uh, or the left hand side screen on the instrument cluster it's a common thing and, and it is generally a replacement or a refurbishment so they've noted that down and also the fiber optic issue they just have noted that it needs time on the diagnostic machine to isolate the issue with the fiber optic most system other than that bodywork alloy refurbs they, they've put all the things that we knew about. Now the other things that we didn't know about, it's not that extensive in all honesty, but I'm here to just tell you what they are. So they've said it needs a major service, including the belt. Well, to be honest, we knew that. The service history corroborates that. The intercooler is blown. It needs a rear brake service. Presumably that means at least pads. Two front wishbones, which I believe are, I think they're lower control arms two rear control arm bushes, the under tray is missing, two front ABS pickup rings. Now, I believe that probably pertains to the ABS warning light we have. And if that can be solved with some pickup rings, then that's not so bad, because they're like what, six quid ago, probably, and pretty easy, I think, to fit. Two front brake flexi pipes, the injector number three is blowing and leaking, two front side light bulbs, wiper blades, and a coolant and brake fluid change. The only other things they've said is that the oil filler cap seal has failed, so that's just a new gasket that will need. The air filter housing and fuse box is loose, and various software upgrades required. And that is it. That is the entire list from the health check. And I'd be really interested straight away to see what you guys think about this. So obviously, going back to Volvo and having all this work done, well, I'm never going to do that, but in the region of an above five grand, it simply wouldn't be doable. But I did put together a list, a shopping basket on, on eBay uh, for all of these parts, including replacement wheels, because I figure that's sort of more economically viable to just replace the entire wheels, because these are in such bad condition that it makes more sense to just replace the set that deals with the refurbishment issue and the tires. But this list came to around 800 quid. I'll, I'll put it on screen, which, it's not a lot, is it? And I wonder if that's worth spending to keep this thing on the road. The only problem with that is that I don't know my spanners from my screwdrivers, and so it's finding someone to, to help with the fitting of parts. But I think I could have a go at control arms and suspension bits if I can get the car safely in the air. I can certainly change some wheels myself. I'm sure I could fit those ABS pickup rings. The list goes on. But the MOT for this car is, well, very soon as I'm filming this. And actually, when you see this video, I think I'll have already taken it for the MOT. And so you'll now be able to go online and look at the results if you want to. If you do do that, don't spoil the surprise for everyone else by, by commenting below if I could ask you that. But the MOT is coming up. So I'm going to take the car for the MOT, despite this bad news, and see what it fails on. And then we can go from there, really. But at the end of the day, even if I fix all of the mechanical bits and there's nothing else that's picked up on the MOT, I'm still then gonna be left with a cosmetically nasty, on the outside, 307,000 mile XC90 from 2004 with the engine that no one really wants. So there's the list. There, there was the uh, result of the vehicle health check at, at Volvo. What a great thing you can do though, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I did it with the Audi as well. It's completely free. They give you a little video of your car, though this one was very brief, as you saw. They tell you all the things that are wrong with it, and in, in today's case, uh, got a, a nice XC40 to drive about, uh, all about an hour anyway. So uh, a very good service that these, these main dealers do provide, even if you're not planning on undertaking actual work with them. Anyway, please share your thoughts below. If you're enjoying this series with the XC90, do give it a thumbs up and uh, I'll be updating you very soon with presumably the results of the MOT and, and where we're gonna go. I, I, I really would like to actually have a go at getting this thing roadworthy again myself, but I do also have to be realistic within my means. So any suggestions you have, please do let me know and share. Thanks all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one very, very soon.